security is a challenge. It's hard for everybody. Um, Peter, something I wanted to talk to you about today is Cisco is known for networking. I spent most of my career in networking. Until I came into developer relations at Cisco, um, I was a network engineer. Classic Cisco stuff, CCNA, CCNP. I worked route switch and all the things. Um, and security is a prevalent part of that for obvious reasons, ho hopefully obvious reasons for everybody. So why is Cisco now talking about app security? Like, in the application stack for any business, why are we getting involved in that? It's an excellent question, and, thank, and thanks for that. So. The reason we're getting into, into application security is, 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 is fairly um, simple, in the sense that more and more of our customers are moving their workloads from an on-prem solution into, into a cloud solution. AWS, Azure, GCP, they're there. Um, and we, we, better want, want, we better make use of them. And it's a little bit difficult to, come, uh, to, to, to bring your physical firewall into, into Amazon and say that for, for this particular workload you need to deploy this physical firewall to actually provide some form of security. That's one reason. Second reason, of course, is that as these applications are becoming more um, important for the enterprises, our customers are um, basically building out their entire um, portfolio based on these cloud applications that are hosted on these, two, these hyperscalers or even on on-prem clouds, uh, it is important that these applications um, uh, become secure as well, even without those firewalls, intrusion detection systems, intrusion prevention systems. That's one thing. The threat factor itself has changed as well. Um, whereas before, doing some network perimeter was a good thing, now you need to start thinking about phishing. You need to start thinking about um, uh, uh, attacks getting into, into the application. You need to understand where your data sits for an application. You need to understand if somebody's crypto mining uh, and stealing CPU for you. So the threat vector itself has changed tremendously as well. I find that, you know, it's, well, I think most of, that, most of those topics will resonate with anyone who's been around information technology security in general, whether it's network-based or other things. And as you're describing it, a firewall does not, I mean, a firewall has never been the end-all be-all for security. Um, it just never, it, you know, defense in depth doesn't include one particular thing. Um, it seems to me, though, based on what you're describing, that all these different vulnerabilities and uh, types of attacks that have been coming into the network for so long, we've become comfortable with, but I've got to imagine that is quite a bit different. It's similar, but there's probably some substantial differences in how someone who is developing an application deals with those, or even what they look like. It's, it's, uh, uh, it, it, it's an excellent question. Uh, so so the, the, key word that I'm, uh, the key words that I'm zooming into are defense in depth. In depth. Um, I'm a diver, so that's why I keep, I keep, uh, keep confusing at depth with in depth. Um, but, but seriously, though, if I, if, I look, if I think about defense in depth, um, what, does that, what does that sentence really state? It simply states that um, I have an application. Uh, that application is, is, is part of my, my enterprise's environment. That, uh, um, um, that, um, that application is actually generating revenue. How do I, uh, as an enterprise owner, or a line of business owner, or a general manager, or a CISO, Get uh, really understand what, what what attackers are doing in in my in my, uh, in my applications and what they could potentially be doing in my uh, in my uh, environment. So yes, it's completely different than before. Before you put uh, there there was a perimeter around your application and I was done. Pretty much you assumed that the attacker couldn't get in. By 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 going into the defense in depth or what I've been term, uh, terming as well, zero trust application security, can I actually build a system? Can I build a secure system for my, uh, for my applications where even uh, if an attacker gets into my application and I don't know how the attacker got into my application, the amount of damage they can do is still very limited. So that means I need to understand where, where my CPU resources can be stolen, I need to understand what can happen to, to, to my application per se, uh, where, where general mayhem can happen, and I need to understand where data sources are. Very many companies, very many enterprises don't even know what data assets they have, where they sit, what they represent. They don't know how attackers can get access to them. That's what, I've, uh, that's what, I, uh, what I view uh, uh, in, in defense in, in depth. Can I, given all of the assets that I'm running? Something that makes me think about it makes me think about a lot of different questions I want to ask, but one in particular is, if I use kind of a slightly different set of terminology to try to better understand this, um, there's a lot of different vectors now. Not that there weren't before, but there's 
almost an innumerable amount of vectors someone can now potentially attack from, whether it's to try to exploit an existing vulnerability or just to try to get in in some way. Now that we've, companies are distributing their applications to many more platforms that are outside of your four walls, right. and you've got to work within those various systems and try to, how are they rationalizing? How do you rationalize the differences between vulnerabilities that exist and how the, all the multitude of ways that someone these different vectors that people can attack you from. And I'm making that sound almost like it's a like it's a war, but it, it kind of is to a degree. Yeah. So one of one of the key keywords that I'm uh, that we're using for these is, 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 is attack path analysis. Um, and another word for for attack path analysis is a, is a kill chain. Given given your uh, your your remark about a, a war, because in essence that's what 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 it is. And. What we're finding is that uh, if you look across the industry, there are so many of these vulnerability scanners for APIs, for, for virtual machines, for containers, for serverless functions, and whatnot, that at the end, you'll end up with thousands of vulnerabilities. What does that help? How does that help the security person? They're not going to fix thousands and thousands of vulnerabilities. The one thing that is really important for, for a security person is to understand how these, how these vulnerabilities can be exploited and can be made part of a kill chain or an attack path. Put yourself in the shoes of an attacker. If I were the attacker, how can I uh, um, uh, disrupt, the, disrupt the application? That's really what we need to get into with attack path analysis. Excellent, thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, how are we seeing, as we kind of wind down here, how is Cisco taking the approach of um, making that attack path or the do it, like performing that analysis of the attack path for application owners and application designers. How are we supporting that? We're, we're, we're definitely supporting that within within um, uh, my organization, ETNI, uh, Emerging Technologies and Incubation. We have uh, a product that is out there. It's called panoptica.app. It's available for free service um, 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 and of course for, for enterprise licensing, but, but the essence of, of Panoptica is to have that view on all of the vulnerabilities that lie within these assets that, that build up the application, whether it's CICD, whether it's uh, cloud, whether it's Kubernetes, whether it's VMs, it doesn't matter. You want to understand what all the vulnerabilities are, and you want to understand how each of these assets hang together. You want to build up a, a graph, a mathematical graph, mm -hmm. on how these, these assets are related to each other. Once I know that, and once I know the exploits that that can, can, can um, uh, that are uh, available to each of these, these these nodes. What I'm trying to do is do an analysis how an attacker can move through um, uh, that mathematical graph to come up with the appropriate attack paths. I you know I really appreciate hearing that, and it's I think that is the key. In my opinion, that is the key to any security um, platform. And by platform, I don't mean product, but plat any security stance that you have is understanding what could happen so you can make the right decisions for your organization. It's not about, as you said, plugging every hole, like fixing every vulnerability per se. It's not about that. It's about, do I understand what those are and how am I going to try to prevent those, those paths from existing or protect them? So that's really good. Thank you so much for sharing. Sure. I really appreciate it.